Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla review and today I'm taking a look at the Master Grade Gundam F91. Well, again! This is my third time taking a look at a variant of this kit. And this of course is the Harrison Madden version from the manga Mobile Suit Crossbone Gundam. So once again, as this is just a premium Bandai variant of a kit that we've seen a couple of times already, if you want to see the full, detailed review of this kit, check out the review right now, up there in the corner of the standard Master Grade Gundam F91. And as usual, when it comes to these premium Bandai reviews, this would not be possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Baiyi. So if you do want one of your own, there will be a link to Baiyi down there in the description. So that right there is what the Master Grade Gundam F91 Harrison version looks like out of the box just snapped together with a little bit of effort, not that much. All I did was add the included stickers, not even all of them, just a couple, and did a little bit of panel lining on the face. Besides that, this is a direct out of box build. And once again, I will mention that this is 100% identical to what we would have seen with the standard version of the Master Grade Gundam F91, just in a different color, which is this awesome shade of dark purplish blue and yellow. If there's one thing I can say about the Gundam F91 is that the detailing, plastic, varying plastic types, etc. is all very, very nice on the eyeball. So first off, there is a quick example of it beside the standard version of the Gundam F91. Of course, if you want to know more about that, you can check out that full review. Also, I did put the F91 stickers up on the shoulders of this guy, and that is something I want to do with this one, but... As this is a premium Bandai kit, that does mean it is water slide decals. So, I have always wanted to try these out, but never have gotten around to it. And I've decided to put a little bit of time into learning some not-so-basic, basic Gunpla techniques. So, I'm going to try these out with the F and the 91. I'm going to do the F without them and the 91 with them and compare whether or not they're even worth it. So as for trying this stuff out, I'm doing the exact same thing with both decals besides the setter and the softer. So as for the F on the left hand side, I'm doing this the old school standard way. That is just cutting it out, leaving it in water for a little while, maybe 15 to 30 seconds, sliding it off, popping it onto the plastic part. Once again, this is not painted or treated in any way, it's just directly onto the plastic. Sopping up what's left of that water until it is all gone, finally adhered, and that is it. So, the standard traditional way. As for the 91 on the right hand shoulder, or what would be its left hand shoulder, I'm going all out with this and trying out the setter and the softer for my first time ever. So this is 100% a first impression right here. So the first thing I did was go right to the Mr. Hobby site to find out how to actually do this because I've never done it before. It all seems pretty straightforward. So with the F91 that goes on its left hand shoulder, or well, right hand shoulder from our perspective, I just cut it out as usual, popped it in the water, just like with the F, applied that Android's blood to the surface, did everything exactly the same as before, just the Setter Neo is on the surface there, drained off all the excess, patted it till it was absolutely dry and fully adhered, and then I applied this softer over it. I didn't know how much to use, so I applied it fairly liberally because I do know this works somewhat like a solvent that will melt it on. If your kit is painted, beware. As far as I know, you need to top coat it first and even still, you may need to be a little bit more careful. But honestly, I haven't a clue. At first glance, I thought these were very similar. I have been having a lot of issues with peeling water slide transfers. After a few years, they just end up peeling off and flying away because my kits are not top coated. So will this be a bit of a solution for that? I'm not quite sure yet. Let's check them out. So first off, there is the F which was applied in the traditional water only way. So this looks exactly the way it would. I do find if you do not top coat these kits, this can flake or peel or get damaged really easily. Basically, sometimes time isn't the kindest to these kind of decals. So there is the 91. This has a lot of leftover clear, so it isn't a very fair comparison. But what I did notice is this seems a lot tighter. It is melted on there and it seems a little bit more permanent. Once again, I will not be top coating this kit. So you may have to check back in five or six years to see how it actually turns out. But it feels a lot more permanent. It looks a lot nicer. It's tighter. There they are side by side, and honestly, visually it doesn't make the hugest difference here, but it does feel like it will stand the test of time a little bit better. But once again, only time will tell. So finally there we go, there is the shoulders back on with those decals, and they look 
Fantastic! Anyway, the first thing I think when I see this kind of color scheme is that Titan's color from Zeta Gundam. So, there is an example of it side by side with a kit in the Titan's colors, and sometimes these tend to vary kit by kit. But I do find the F91 here is a little bit more of a vibrant bluish purple than what you'd see on something like this. Also, F91 mobile suits are very, very small. So now moving on into the accessories and there is the Master Grade Gundam F91 Harrison Madden version with absolutely everything that it comes with. Once again, this is exactly the same lineup of accessories we would have seen with the standard F91 version just in those Harrison Madden colors. So what we've got is that action base, once again same as before. It has that unique design for using with the sold separately LED kit, which runs up through here and into the chest of the F91, like you're seeing right now. This whole thing clips in exactly the same way we would have seen with the Gundam F91. Once again, if you do want more info on how this all works, you can check out that full review. As for the weapons, first up we've got the beam rifle, once again the same as before, now in this dark purplish blue on dark grey. The detailing on this is phenomenal, once again the best aspect of this kit right here is the fantastic attention to detail. This has a side to side moving handle up front, and there is a blue shiny sticker included for the lens, but for some reason or another, I totally forgot to use it. Next up then we've got the beam launcher, once again exactly the same as what we saw with the white version of the F91, and as you can guess, this is just in a different color. Once again, same awesome level of detail, it looks fantastic, just like everything that we've seen so far. I have no idea why, but this time I did not forget to add on the blue sticker for the lens. And as for moving parts, we've got a removable magazine down back, a moving handle which allows the entire thing to tilt forward and back in the hand, and this little opening gimmick up front. As for close quarters weapons, we do have two beam sabers which store away in this very cool little side skirt section here. They just pop out like that. Both are in the one side, which I think is a very cool touch design-wise. As for the other side skirting armor, we do not have beam sabers in here. This time around, we have an extra spare beam shield. The beams that we have in here are an incredible shade of green. They just pop into the handles just like so. The beam shield effect part is in the exact same crazy awesome shade of green as the beam sabers. And all of these weapons and equipment attach on in the exact same way we would have seen with the standard version of the Master Grade. In here we do have those swappable finger style hands so everything is easy to do, holds in quite securely, and in general you won't have any issues with any of this. So when it comes to the F-91's head, we do have a lot of options in here due to the fact that the Gundam F-91 has a whole venting mechanism in the front of its face. So in here we do have this right here, which is the static version of the head. You'll notice that the V-fin here is color accurate, which is the red center and the white outer sections. However, we only have one set of those, so if you do want both ready to go at the same time, you're a little bit out of luck. There are non-color accurate sections in here if you do want to paint them, but the leftover parts in here are just in pure yellow. Once again, this is a static head. If you want to swap them out, then we have this swappable alternate muzzle segment and the alternative head here that can fully transform. Once again, if you want to see more about that, check out that full review. So now moving on to the articulation and that is definitely the Master Grade Gundam F91's weakest aspect, especially from the waist down. It isn't the worst by any means, but it is a little bit disappointing for a modern Master Grade kit. And just for the sake of this section in this video, I'm just going to copy the pose that is on the box. And even here, they didn't try too hard with the knees because, well, they don't do a whole lot. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And just like with the standard version of the Master Grade Gundam F91 2.0, this to me is silver tier. And that is a little bit of an odd ranking, I must say. The problem with this kit mainly is the fact that there's certain aspects about it that are disappointing, like the articulation. But everything outside of that is pretty much fantastic. Everyone wants something a little bit different when it comes to a Gundam model kit. So if what you want is something that looks fantastic, multiple different finishes from clear plastic to standard plastic to painted metallic parts, then this is a kit you will absolutely adore. It won't pull off the craziest of poses, but it will pull off anything pretty basic. It's got some cool thruster gimmicks in the back of the legs. It's got a cool kick up hip gimmick, 
And if you do have the LED unit, the whole central section can light up. So once again, it is a fantastic master grade. I'm just disappointed by some of the aspects that let it down. This color scheme, however, is quite cool. It is rare to see this shade of purplish blue and yellow together on a Gundam kit, so it does make it stand out quite a bit. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description to buy E. That's where I got mine. You can get yours there too. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys. Whether you just watch my videos, like them, or support the channel on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. Like Craig Jerry, Greg Humphrey, Kaiser721, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhardt, Sean T, and the Ambassador for Asymmetric Cats.